Welcome to Business on Purpose, the podcast for hardworking entrepreneurs who drive our economy. I'm your host, Barry Barrett, and as a sales leader, business owner, and former Marine, I understand the challenges that come with entrepreneurship. Each week, I'll be interviewing business owners who have faced the same struggles that you have, low revenue and a lack of scalability in their sales force. Together, we'll explore their entrepreneurial journey and uncover the valuable lesson they've learned along the way. From mentors to advice, we'll dive deep into what has helped these business owners get unstuck and move forward towards success. Whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned entrepreneur, this podcast is for you. So join us on Business On Purpose as we learn from the experience of successful business owners and navigate the road to success together. Let's get started. Welcome to the show, Boo. And just tell us a little bit about yourself, your company, and just about you in general. Hey, Barry. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate this um, opportunity, mate. I'm the the CEO of a company called Afterburner. Very, very recently, the CEO, the company itself was founded 26 years ago, nearly 27, by a gentleman called Jim Murphy, James Murphy. And it kind of codified the fighter pilot way of working. And for the last sort of 26 years, you know, Afterburn has been ramping up the charts, working with over three and a half thousand companies, all about fighter pilot mindset, but more importantly, Mm. how you create mindset, how you create habits. And it was a spinoff of of a methodology fighter pilots implemented about 60 years ago. And that methodology fighter pilots still use today. And in fact, we translate that methodology across other services, particularly services where there's a really high consequence for performance, Marines, special forces, you know, but for me, I have been an entrepreneur for the last 19 years and I was, had a, what, what they call an afterburner license. I was delivering keynotes around fighter pilot uh, mindset and mentality, what we call flawless execution. As a bit of a side hustle in Australia, whilst I was also running my primary businesses. So I'd never been a speaker on stage or never done anything like that Mm. uh, until I wandered in Afterburner. It's very purposeful. It's a very purposeful story, this Afterburner story. Yeah. Uh, And uh, what happened nine years ago was I just finished building a very innovative hotel in Australia. Uh, I'm obviously Australian. And it was on the west coast of Australia, one of our big cities called and it was the first time we'd used a, a form of construction called volumetric prefabricated modular construction, which basically it's big Lego, big Lego blocks. Uh, and you build the entire high-rise building, in this case, 17-story building, in a factory, and you just put it up like big blocks on, on site. Right. And, and it significantly reduces the, the amount of time to build high-rise buildings, which is good because you don't have to uh, borrow a lot of money for a long time. And obviously, the faster a building gets built, the less labor costs and all the other associated costs. So, so we had a project that was in unviable, and we created this, set the company up, it was called Mode Modular Developments, and created this innovative technology to be able to be able to do that. But when it was finished, because it was a, because it was more of a you know a capital asset, it takes a while for it to to, to gain traction to build uh, some revenue. So when I finished, I heard about this company called Afterburner. Uh, a friend of mine was delivering keynotes around Australia and I didn't know much about it. And I reached out to him and I said, Hey, his name is Phil. Phil, you know, I finished this hotel. I'd love to help you, you know, with the brand. You know, I've been, been around business for 11 years now. My first business was grew to sort of hundred million dollar turnover in, in the Middle East. I was pretty, pretty comfortable and really just looking to keep myself busy. I was, it just turned 40. And it, it just so happened that when I posed it to him, he said that he was uh, looking to rejoin the Air Force and become a fighter pilot again. And, and he is today. He's, he's back being a fighter pilot. Oh, wow. And uh, so I took it over in Australia, uh, really loved it. I just thought, you know, that's my story codified. I was a fighter pilot. I was medically discharged uh, um, with an autoimmune disease. So I couldn't fly jets anymore. Had to go out, reinvent myself, reinvent myself as a business founder. First business was very successful. And from there, you, you know, it's 19 years now that I've been in business and left those fighter pilot routes, but I still use the methodologies and I still use the mindset hmm. that I was taught you know, from a 19-year-old. Uh, and then uh, late last year, the founder and I had a conversation and I just made an offer to buy the business after Banner, which he accepted. 
And uh, the next thing you know, I'm on a plane living here in Miami. Having left Sydney certainly wasn't part of the life plan, but it definitely is aligned with with my life purpose to to be a fighter pilot, to have a medical condition that meant I had to leave the Air Force, to be forced into learning about business, becoming a business founder, you know, living in the Middle East, middle of nowhere in, in uh, was the Akbakan in, in Kabul. And, and now here I am, the CEO of a company that teaches a methodology that helps them achieve the same sort of success rate of fighter pilots, you know, 98%. And I know from my own experience with small and large enterprise that it's very hard for anyone to to, to get the cut through and, and get things done. And it's harder now than it's ever been before. We probably live in the most complex time in, in human history. And it's only getting faster and more and more complex as each month passes by. So fighter pilot mentality, uh, our mindset and the way we work is engineered from the ground up to work in complex, fast-moving environments. So forget the airplanes, forget the combat, forget the war, forget everything uh, associated with, with what you understand as a fighter pilot. The power that we are taught is this Jedi-like mind trick mm. of how you become exceptionally good at getting things done. Yeah, that's good. It sounds like you, you know, like most entrepreneurs, you just saw a, a, a you saw a place that you thought you fit in and you just figured it out along the way, right? <laughs> so yeah. is that and it's part the, of it's that the same same story? If, if it wasn't for COVID, if it wasn't for everything bad in the world that happened, I wouldn't have been presented with this opportunity. So it's sort of again, it's the you, you know my, our thinking is called iterative thinking. It means that there's never an end to anything. Everything's always in motion. There's yeah. always an opportunity. There's always a threat. So if you look at life that way, you know, the yin and the yang kind of balances out and, and fighter pilots are really good at that. We, we understand that in, even on a mission level, discrete, that there's good and bad things that happen on a mission, uh, but nev- nothing's ever as good or as bad as it seems. It's only mm. as good or as bad as you make it. Yeah, I, I think that's it. You know, one of the things that I love the saying is the work. The worst thing that ever happened to you is the worst thing that ever happened to you. Yeah. And so it, it basically means like, I don't care who you are. Like if, if, if something bad happened to you, it is the worst thing. And you feel the same emotions as, as, or the similar emotions as somebody else that, that something worse may have happened to them, but that's the worst thing that ever happened to them. But every time I think you make a choice of how you deal with that, and then that will either you'll either, you know, fight, you know, the fight flight or, or, or freeze next time. Right. So if you, if you freeze, you're likely to freeze next time. Right. And, and there's a lot, of, there's a lot to unpack around that conversation. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the difference between, you know, people always say, push yourself outside your comfort zone. Uh, we, whereas as a fighter pilot, we say, just keep extending your existing comfort zone. Uh, yeah. Don't, just, there's no point going outside it because you're going to have a fright. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go from having feelings to emotions, and then when you start to get outside your comfort zone and you're in emotive decision making, you're not making good, good decisions. Uh, by pushing your existing comfort zone, which means yeah, keep stretching, keep growing, but make that a daily practice, huh. make that an every mission practice. W- what happens is you you grow consistently, compounding every day a little bit more, but you don't actually end up outside your comfort zone where we start to trigger those freeze, fight, flight, or freeze, freeze responses. Right. During training though, and, and as a, as a pilot, they do put you outside your comfort zone every now and again, but the reason mm-hmm. they do it is one. So you notice it, you say, I've just reached, I've just gone beyond my level of competency and competence and call it confidence and competency and to stop and to say, Oh, I'm going to stop the mission, fly the airplane straight and level. I'm going, to, I'm going to make the safe decision. And yeah. that, only happens, that only happens six or seven times. And what they're actually looking for is the NAFOD pilot, the no apparent fear of death, you know, the, the, the one that even when they're outside their comfort zone, they keep pushing and they kick in adrenaline. Uh, nine times out of 10, they're going to be okay. But equally, nine times out of 10, that's the pilot that's hit the ground during our history as fighter pilots and killed themselves. Right. Gotcha. So one of the things that I, I try to impart and 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 do for myself is just I say, outside your comfort zone. And I think you, you just said it better, but I always said, get no more than 10% outside your comfort zone. <laughs> right. You, you don't know, you don't know how to push your comfort zone because right. no one's ever taught you. Like we, we're, when we, when we come to human performance, we're like 
boxes trying to uh, use a sewing needle, right? Uh -huh. Like we just have these big generalizations. What's great about fighter pilot thinking and, and the way that we work is it is, it is a methodology. You, you follow some steps and the product of those steps is your, your comfort zone gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and for most, you know, fighter pilots, whether it's jumping out of an airplane, diving with, with great white sharks, what most people would perceive as being outside their comfort zone, they're very big, there's a lot that sits inside them because we got right. taught from a very young age how to deliberately grow a comfort zone without hurting yourself. Who, who is the, 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 the ideal makeup of the person who you work with usually? People who have a mindset where they're, they know that they've, they've got the purpose right and they've got the vision right and there's a lot of motivation be between what they're trying to do, but at the same time, they feel it's taking too long or they're frustrated by their team. They feel like there's, they're just frustrated with the journey. It's not happening fast mm -hmm. enough. So we're, afterburner is the, well, it's an afterburner, right? Your back of an airplane makes you go fast when you need to go fast, but you can also come out of it when you need to go slow because uh, it uses a lot of energy. So we're the afterburner mm -hmm. for a business. We'll come in, we'll give people a very simple system in, in which to run their business. I mean, the simplest system you've ever seen, but by following it, you'll see a 300% up or well, what we call a 300%, a 3X or three down. You'll get three times more done for the same effort, or you'll have three times as much time off for the same outcome. Right, right, right. And, and it's the reason why it's a mindset, well, it's two, it's mindset and methodology. Uh, m mindset is, an, is a word where I've been doing a lot of research on mindset lately because people throw it around everywhere. And I'm sure. Like, 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 what actually is it? And there's so many different definitions. But the one I like the most is your, your mindset is, is, your, is your belief system. So, so mindset is what you believe, right? Yeah. And, and therefore, performance is, is not what you do. It's what you believe. Agreed. And, and, I, and I, I learned this, this. I had this epiphany about three months ago when I was, ha, had an Uber trip. I was on my way to, I can't remember, where, Seattle, I think, for an event. And a U.S. Marine was my Uber driver. And he, he would been in the Marines in the 80s and done a few cool things. And yeah. it, Hamas and Israel had just had literally just kicked off that weekend. So I was in, in right. the cover. So we were talking about warfare. We were talking about Iraq. And we're talking about warfare over time. You know, and I said to him something simple. So I said, look, how do you think this, this pans out? Who do you think is going to, you know, what, what does good look like at the end? And he, and he said something very insightful and he's spot on. And he said, well, the winner is the, the one who wants it the most. And he said, that's been the same in every war throughout history. Whoever yeah. wants to win the most wins. And I thought about that and I'm like, you know what? That's exactly right. That was my mindset as a fighter pilot, my mindset as a business owner. It's just, it's just this assumption that you're going to win and you're never going to stop until you do. Right. Uh, and, and that to me is, you know, that's a very, that belief structure is, is very powerful. So mindset is belief. That's step one. The second one, though, is, is you don't believe your beliefs unless you see them happening. Hmm. So you have, to, you have to do stuff. You can't just sit in front, of the, in, in front of the mirror with your positive affirmation mantra and not, actually, and not actually win, right? So we have to create this methodology and, and a way of winning small every day just to give a little, little kick. Like for me, I'm, I'm doing the 72-hour uh, water, water fast, right? I'm, I'm, I'm just about to click over the halfway point. I'm, I'm, I'm 36 hours in and Good for you. And part of it is in terms of the winning small, isn't, Hey, I've got to fast for three days. It's like, all right, for, for breakfast, I've just got to, I've just, I've just got to kick that breakfast craving. I just got to have two, two big glasses of water. And I'm going to feel full. Uh, and you have your small win. And then it comes in again at, at, at lunchtime, you have your small win. Then you know at dinner time and at nighttime is going to be at its worst, right? So go to bed early, right? <laughs> just, just turn the time machine on right. and, and, and don't worry about it. So, so those, those abilities to, because if you think about, oh man, only two and two days to go, only, only a day and a half to go, like you, you give up, right? And you, right. That, what, that, what that turns in is, well, it's only a day to go, so I may as well just do it. I've got most of the way there. Yeah. Uh, so, so when you so this winning small methodology. So, so the methodology is this: 
uh, it's four steps, plan, brief, execute, debrief, which is uh, effectively set yourself up, communicate to your network and your belief system, what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. uh, execute by staying focused on, on what you need to do to get the job done, not, not be distracted, but understand you're going to be distracted. So learn how to become undistracted rather than don't get distracted, become undistracted. Yeah, I like uh, that. And, yeah, that's good. And and then the, the, the final one is the debrief and that, that it, it's, in itself is another four steps, which is cool. What we call the orca method. Um, orca being a killer whale, killer whale being the most intelligent animal mammal in the animal kingdom. Yeah. Uh, so it's a smart thing to do, and that's as simple as objective, result, cause, action. So, so we ask ourselves, hey, what objective? What did I set out to do today? Result? What actually happened? Cause? Why did that happen? If it's a if it's a positive delta, I outperformed. Well, I want to keep doing that. Yeah. Or more likely because of our biases and how we're made up, we, we always underperform due to our optimism bias, planning fallacy bias, all, mm-hmm. all of these things that, that make us human. So, so we're typically always undershooting our, our goals. Uh, and, and if you look at the research around that in business, it's anywhere between, depending on what you read, 5 and 40% is the average win rate of, a, of an annual strategy in a business. And it's about 8% in people, in people living their life dream. Okay. So yeah. Ninety-two percent of us get tripped up by our cognitive biases, aka our beliefs, aka our mindset. Right. So, 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 where we reprogram our mindset now is in that third step, which is to truly understand the cause of our gap in in performance. And and once we and and that cause has to come down to to one thing, and that's you. So it comes mm-hmm. down to what what did I do that was the cause of that over or under? If you're working with a team. Then it's still what did I do, but in a peer group, a supportive peer group. Right. And we open up the table to something we call nameless and rankless, which is everyone is equal there. So if, so if I'm trying to debrief why there's a gap in my performance, let's just say I'm learning to play golf and I don't know how to play golf. So I can sit there and debrief as much as I like, but I'm probably <laughs> not going to be better right. because I, I don't have an expert in the room. So I would say as part of my team in the planning process, I want to learn golf. A resource I require is a is a golf pro or at least my YouTube videos, and through that process I will come down to a root cause. Yeah. If I'm unaware, then I invite my peer group to contribute. Uh, but the magic of the debrief is not the cause. That's the easy part, actually, and it's also probably going to be wrong the first couple of times. What you think, right. what you think is doing wrong, you're doing wrong is probably not what you're actually doing. Right. Wrong. Uh, again, because of these biases, especially in golf. If you've ever, if, yeah, if exactly, you've ever, right. Yeah, my, my yeah. son's well, a college golfer. Oh and wow, so there you go. So when you I mean, said, when as soon as you said like YouTube or, or or a pro, I'm like, yeah, go with the pro. It'll cost you a lot less money. It's yeah, well, it's it's like anything. Isn't it? It's <laughs> it's usually money is an accelerator of time, right? If you think yes. of money as a commodity to time, yeah, and that's great when you're selling well, as well. And I would say freedom, right? Freedom always costs money, and so. Yeah. People say, well, you, you can't buy time. I'm like, well, absolutely you can. And number one, people with more money live longer. It's it's not even close. And number two, if you had a billion dollars, you could do whatever you wanted at that time. So it can buy you time in both ways. All, more time extended your life. And it can buy you time doing what you want. Like we just got back from Hawaii, like I just said. And it took money to do that. No one, you know, took my looks for any kind of currency. Yeah. 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 People, well, and, then, and like you said, mindset, like people believe that, 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 that you can't buy time. And I'm like, well, yes, you can. You just can. You can buy yeah. a red light therapy bed. You can buy better vitamins. You can buy better food. Do you know what a food desert is? No. Yeah. A food desert. It's, it's really prevalent in America. If you go to any big city in America, it's littered with food deserts. Oh, there's no, so, no, you mean like no real food? No real food. Yeah. So if you go to New York, it is literally a food desert. Yeah. And so you would need to make a lot of money to actually eat real whole foods in New York. Yeah. yeah Otherwise, it's a food desert. Yeah. So that is the reason, you know, we used to have a starvation problem in the world and we no longer really do. Uh, we have, we still have a malnutrition problem problem it's just yeah. that people are dying of too much food like substance yeah. right yeah that's good i like that i like that but 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 the magic is the last step so 
what's my objective? What's my result? What's my cause? But this is where the magic happens. It's A for action, right? Just yeah. do something. It mightn't be the right thing, but if you every single day execute an intentional action, an action that is connected to what you want. Yes. What, what is real, what's going on in the real world. Eventually you will come up with, with the right action. And, and this is a thought, this, this is not really a methodology. It, it becomes a way of thinking. It's a way of processing your thoughts. And it's what mm-hmm. fighter pilots are coded to think. Are you, every fighter pilot I know is an exceptionally fast and accurate problem solver. And you can put them in any environment, an entrepreneur, yeah, you can put them in their, in their kid's soccer team as a coach, whatever it is, they will have an accelerated learning curve. Now they'll, they'll tap out, obviously, where, where at the intersection of time and talent, eventually they'll get to the, to the limit of what, what talent they don't have. Right. Uh, but, but that's okay. Which, because- really quick, time and talent, like, it, every fighter pilot makes decisions quickly. So do you, is it, is it an innate talent in the beginning uh, has, or can everybody develop this type of, of, of problem solving quickly? So the, the selection criteria to be a fighter pilot in Australia is you just have to be a, above average. You don't have to be amazing. You, you can't really be average. Just you need to be like a 65 to 75 percent. Right? That's all you need to be. And, and kind of okay at everything enough of it you, you're 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 an athlete in that you you respect uh fitness and exercise mm-hmm. you're academic enough that you know you can use a calculator to buy you don't need to use a calculator to buy a coffee and they'll take that and mold it into an exceptional fighter i got pilot. you so to do your program as an entrepreneur do you need to be 65 to 70 percent and you just need have- to want it you 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 need to want your business to be a unicorn to 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 uh-huh. make the jump from the two to ten million bracket what i call the the entrepreneurial comfort bracket okay so so real quick so from so your ideal person uh, is already at two million dollars well they're the only ones that can afford to use us to be honest but um right so so <laughs> but from a mindset from reading the book anyone you can be i've worked with high school rowers yeah football teams we, we after ben has worked with 19 NFL teams of which two have made the Super Bowl and one, five have actually made it to Super Bowl. So yeah. you can be, you can be anyone. I mean, there isn't an industry or an individual sure. we've worked with. I mean, I took a company, I took a company that for 12 years was in the one to two million bracket. And in gotcha. six months of this methodology, they grew four hundred percent in six, they jumped yeah. from two to eight in six months. So I'm a big statistics guy. Do you know what percentage of, of businesses do a million plus? I don't know what it is here, but I know in Australia at about 2 mil, 90% of small businesses and businesses are under $2 million. So only 9% do a million or more. Yeah, right. In a, of course, well, in America, and we have a there. lot. That's the only reason. Yeah, we have a lot more businesses, right? In, in America than it, almost anywhere else, I, I think. That might be a cognitive, cognitive bias of mine. I don't know, but I, I think. I would because say so. We, yeah, because anybody with a, anybody with a, with a skill set can just start a business here. It doesn't yeah. even cost that much, right? You Absolutely. can be a, 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 a 10, anybody with a 1099 is a business owner, really. Yeah. So only 9% of businesses in America are a million plus. And so, yeah, I would say it would, it would take that, you know, seven, if, if you were at 70%, right? So you'd be doing maybe maybe $600,000 a year. But they could read it your depends, book. depends, though, because what you're probably looking at is anything under a million dollars is probably just a sold trade at 1099. And, yeah. And, and some of them might be doing 800 a year, but that's net, net to you for your effort, right? Right. You might have a couple of employees. Correct. Right? But not, but but you're you're probably still, I think... Once you're taking home about, if you're, if you're taking home above 300,000 a year, you're in the top 1% of earners in the US, right? 400. So, yeah. So, so, so once you're there, what's the imperative to keep going? So that's sure. where, my, that's where you get the mindset shift where the people who are, who are, who are taking it to the next level, they're yeah. not in it for the money. They're not in it. They're not in it for, to right. be comfortable. Cause they're making, if they're making 400, or even 300, depending on where you live. If you're, 
you're making 300 in LA, you're, yeah. you're, you're not doing that well. Yeah, that's true. Right? It's true. But you would hopefully be, be doing better. But you think about it, right? You think about that next step. When you go from being you and a small team to growth, you've got to roll that back into the business now. Yeah, 100%. Got, I like that. Yeah, good. And, and, and people don't want to do that because they're like, well, that's, that's my nice car gone, my expense account for, you know, and what if it doesn't work? What if, what what if, if they're not as good as me? And then no one that's ever good. is. That's good. So that's, that's, so that's where you fit in, right? Yeah. It's like break, good. got to break through the glass wall. You got to go back. We, we call it conserve, combat survival. So to become a, a fighter pilot, you got to go and do this. You got to go for three weeks and basically live off the land and live in dinghies and you, and you lose about 15, 20 pounds of weight. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's embrace the suck. And, <laughs> and, and as an entrepreneur, you always got to go back into that mode. There's, and it's, this is the circle, right? This yeah. is the circle. The minute you have an A to B life, the minute you think there's a start and a finish, uh, you, you'll finish where you set the boundary, like where you've set the finish line. Right. Not, not, uh, so iterative thinkers are constant, like Elon Musk, you know, these Jeff Bezos, you know, these expansive thinkers, there's yeah. no end. There's no end for them. No, it's, just it's an infinite, infinite game, right? Correct. Yeah. So that, you know, I, I love that. And so when do you work with, with the entrepreneur or the whole team? So we typically as Afterburner work at, at the enterprise level, Nike, Michael Dell, Dell Computers, you know, uh, Orlando Magic NBA team on, on later this week. So we typically work like as our organization, we, we typically work our, our ideal clients a billion plus. Uh, right. Because we're a rare commodity. There's not many fighter pilots, not many fighter pilots that understand business. That's right. Uh, but um but yeah, I mean, we are, we're, we're excited about one of our, biz me as a small business owner for a long time, you know, my, my part of the vision with Afterburner under new ownership is to start to open up our platform to allow other coaches to become certified in our methodologies gotcha. and to start to run effectively events around that where we focus on one thing and that is strategy to execution. Our, our, you come to our program and what you want, we will guarantee you'll get there faster. Mm. That is our, that is our, our magic. We won't tell you, you know, how to manage your accounts. We're not going to show you how to AMB test a Facebook ad campaign. Right. You need people for that. Yeah. We're going to, yeah. we're going to show you how to, how to conduct that orchestra. That I got speed. you. I love it. And so how many people do you typically work with in an organization when you go in? We've worked with uh, 4,000 leaders before, down to four. So it just depends. Our, we have a product range that is keynote focused, seminar focused. Then we have workshops and we go down gotcha. into coaching, training, and development programs. Okay, good. And so you're pretty immersed in, you know, once somebody goes all in with your company, you're, you're immersed in, in every piece of DNA they have in their business. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm with them. My team is with them. We're in growth right. mode. We're, we're taking a company that is, has not really grown in 25 years. Gotcha. With a, with a, a hundred mil plus revenue target in the next five years. So, so we're, we're shoulder to shoulder with everyone when we're delivering our programs. We're also, we're also there. You, you can't make instantaneous growth. So our growth right. here <laughs> yeah. is, is, is the same as everyone else's. And we have that, we have that to share. I mean, in the last six months, we're, started partner programs. We've got business owner franchise model. Look, our, our distribution model is completely transformed from the Apple Mac centralized control model to the Android distributed yeah. intellectual property. So you're, you, you go in, what, what is the mindset, right? What is the, the, if there was two or three, you know, typical mindsets that when you enter into a business that exist, what, what might one of the most so, troublesome so mindsets are. I say there's only one mindset, and that's fighter pilot mindset, right? Yeah. Uh, if you look at if you look at Carol Dweck or some of the the, the experts around mindset, right? They, they say there's two, right? There's the fixed and the growth. Yeah. The beauty about uh, fighter pilot mindset, and I believe in every human, we are we are the sum of both. There are things about us that are fixed, and there's things about us that are geared to growth. So you, you might be excited to learn and grow some things, but mm -hmm. you'll have habits and, and rituals and routines that for some reason you believe without them, you will not be successful. 
Right. Yeah, uh, you know, I push back a lot against you know the atomic habits, the seven habits of highly effective. All that, all of that is building biases. Your habits and what you need to win are very unique to you, and that's why you need to debrief because that's the only way that you find the right habits to match your journey. If you're if you're if you're the sort of person that likes to work till eleven o'clock at night, and then you, all of a sudden you want to join the five a.m. club because the five a.m. club says it's great, right? You're going to be, you're going to be in conflict with yourself. You you are not going to be. You are going to develop a habit that is counterproductive to your destination and your belief. Yeah. So all of these. I've re- every time I read these books, I'm like, no, nah, that one doesn't work for me. No, nope, I don't like that one either. I'm not going to have right. a cold shower because. Yeah, I'm, I get invigorated by a cold shower, but I get pissed off as well because I missed out on a hot shower. So what's the what's the yeah? I work hard. Why do I want to? Why do I want to? <laughs> well, what what are the benefits of a cold shower? That's what I would ask, right? What are the benefits for me? Like, it's yeah, my, that's if you look at biological benefits, right, of a cold shower, and I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to go deep. So if it's your life, right? Do you want to live a long life or a shorter life is what but I would What about add. the mental? I mean, that it's all bio, right? But what uh-huh. about the mental impact of it? What about the, the me- mental oh, that, impact? Oh, I'm glad you said that because if you take, you know, let's take away the cold shower and just go cold plunge, right? So mentally, if you get it in a, in a cold plunge, you know, I think it's 11, uh, up to 11 minutes a week. It's science, right? It's not, it's not, it's just science then you get a mental endorphins and for the rest of the day, like it just is you, your mentality for the rest of the day. So, so the other thing is like mentality, when you do hard stuff yourself on purpose early in the morning, the hardest time, like you have a mental edge over everybody else because when things get uncomfortable is when people, or I'll just use I, when I, start to lose against competition against and the competition is myself yeah and so and that's that's the mental challenge that, that we create so th- there's so take the science of the there's four key performance drivers right yeah dopamine, do, dopamine oxytocin serotonin and endorphin uh-huh. okay uh, dopamine is designed for us to get a hit of energy based on something that's based on based on procreation basically it's, it's there yeah there for us to enjoy having sex. So we keep propagating the planet. That's the purpose of dopamine. So we've obviously filled that with digital distraction and all this other nonsense. Oxytocin, sure. oxytocin is designed to keep the village together to protect the child. Okay. So, and it's designed, it comes out during hard times, not hard times by yourself, hard times together. So what have we done? Remote environment. We stop working together. Our oxytocin breaks down. Our society and community starts to break down because we no longer have the oxytocin of solving hard problems together. Our mom yeah. and dad did. They were always working together, rotary, working in community groups. There was a very strong familial bond there. Uh, serotonin is moderating our, our our happiness and our and our sadness, and to a large degree, uh, is a fairly automatic response. Some of us have a lot of it. Some of us don't. But yeah. emerging research is starting to say, well, serotonin is just the symptom, not the cause. And yeah, endorphins, when, when things get really hard, your body has a response to try. Endorphins are a response to bad things. Like we've got to remember that. Running too hard, jumping in a car, things we're not designed to do. Endorphins are created to make sure we survive in that environment. The endorphin rush is designed to get us out of the cold water. The endorphin rush is to make us run faster when we're getting chased by a threat. We're just hacking the system and we may as well st- we're just creating a drug based on putting ourselves in these situations. Well, saying, the, saying it's isn't, the, isn't the problem that we've created a, the drug of comfort and that's why we can't get those things? No, I, absolutely right. We, we, we are overly, but that's, we are, we are overly seduced by comfort. And, yeah, and it, listen, and, and I love this conversation. I, I didn't I think this conversation would go here, but I freaking love it because well, I, let's go back to early in the conversation. You're like, I'm I'm doing a fast, like a 72 hour fast. Well, why would you do that? I'm doing that because of because I've overindulged. My yin and yang is out. I, I I've not been healthy enough. I've been on the road good for, for 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 30 days out of 40. Again, I've been living life in the food desert. 
And and as a result right. of that, I, I need to just reset, right? I just need to yeah. need to, to to reset. I'm at home now. I can I can get back into my it's it's a fast, but then it's also another nine days of just eating well and just just getting my equilibrium back, right? It is hard to on the <laughs> It's funny, well, it's that, hard, but it's not impossible. Uh, I, mean, it I I do it too, right? So, how do you? I don't, I don't fast because I don't I don't I don't fast because of the benefits of destroying cancer cells and all the rest. If that happens, fantastic, great. That's that's. But for me, everything is about equilibrium, and the more we we pull ourselves out of an equilibrium, I got gotcha. you. So so, I'm not saying don't. I'm not saying what, what I'm what my perspective is. Is if you're going for a run in the morning and jumping in a cold shower and waking up at 5 a.m., you're stressing the shit out of your body. You're not designed. Agreed. You're not designed. But um, but people who are ill-informed, that's what yes. they do. They'll go right. and jump in, wake up at five, jump in a cold pool, go for a run, jump in the sauna, jump back in the cold. And then nine o'clock in the morning, you go, why am I so exhausted and don't feel like doing anything? Yeah. And that's because you've, you've overstressed I, I I agree with that right there, hundred percent. So so what I did is I I do a program called Wild Health. Have you ever heard of Wild Health? No, man. I don't. I don't listen. I don't. I don't get involved with any of those things. My trainer, he's he's massive on all these. He, he eats meat only for friggin' three months. Well, has he taken his DNA test and know that that's the diet best for him? His his ancestral ancestral diet. Because you know I I work with entrepreneurs too. I am one and. Like I'm like ancestral diet, but d- if he if you don't know what your ancestors did or ate, how are you using an ancestral diet? You're using somebody's idea of an ancestral diet, but like you know, I've got a report I could pull up right now and I could show you by, by my DNA and my blood work exactly what I am deficient in. I can tell you exactly what I should be eating because this DNA test tells me. That that's what my ancestors ate. Does but that make based, sense? It's it's only, but all of this is based on today's science, right? So the best, it's, same, it's the best science we have. Yeah, the same science that used leeches to cure us as, as a cold at the time. Well, I don't was, think it's the same science that that gave us leeches. I I I think that that was. A, do you think that we know more? or less today about the human no, we, body. We, abs- we, we absolutely know more, <laughs> but but equally we're equipped with a very intelligent system, which is just yeah. us, our, our, sure. our look at you. And I certainly believe that knowledge is power. So of, of course, like consume as much knowledge as, as you possibly can. Yeah. But my experience, I'm 49, right? Yeah. And the number of people that I've, I've worked with in, and I work with in, you know, high performing sports team and, no matter who I know over those periods of years, some of them 30 years, every, every time I, I catch up with them and it might be every four or five years, I'm like, how's that diet going? Oh, I, we don't do that. That's actually turned out to be really wrong. I'm like, oh, really? Because at the time it was like, the, it was complete. Science, science is based on fulfilling someone's assumption. It doesn't yeah. happen by accident, right? We don't, we don't accidentally figure this stuff out. Someone goes, I wonder if we take our DNA, whether we can figure out what diet we should have. And they go and they do the science and they fulfill their own prophecy. It's the performance is linked to the belief. Yeah. So you think that if if my belief is I eat just a, just a ton of sugar every day, that my that that that's, that and, and that will be the best version of myself, and I'll get skinny. Then that's what will happen. But for some people, do that. Some people can some do that. Some people that are is fat them. though. <laughs> right. And I agree with you. Some so, people but, like you can't just believe something and achieve it. That can't be the mindset, right? No. <laughs> but, I know it rhymes, but but that's what but that's that just because you believe that it, that's a that's a, a fallible belief. You, you yes, believe, of course. You, your belief, your belief. If you have a belief, is I believe should that's just that's just been you know that that's why you should read some books. My mine is belief of the outcome, the belief yeah. of a of a happy, healthy, healthy life. Right, for example. Right. Um. And you know, for some people, they can they can pile in the carbs and be fine. For me, you know, I when I was um, when I was well, to, exactly. Everyone's different, right? And, well, and, sure. And and I have an autoimmune disease, right? So so my immune system's incredibly heightened and responds to everything and anything. Yeah. So w- when I did a food protein test, which I'd never even heard of seven years ago, right? I finally discovered the foods that create an immune response. Good. And, and as soon as I cut those immune response foods out, 
I was I was fine. No, no. Look, I'm I'm just being devil's advocate. I mean, I I I, I, I just, love this. I believe everyone. I believe, I believe. Read and do everything, but debrief it, and then that way you will find out quicker yes. if it's right for you or or it isn't. Don't don't just do it because you saw it on Instagram. Don't just do it because the other thing we do is we set up these expectations that are never fulfilled, and that's right. really your mental health. Yeah, there's a there's a, a saying that depression is cultivated in an expectation unmet. And, mm. and we, where there is so many, we need to do this and eat this and be this way and do that. And you, and all of a sudden when, when people do those things and it's not right for them, the, the, they feel bad about themselves. Yeah. You and know, I would how say to be, how to be a good entrepreneur, how to be a great mom. Yeah. I like that, but I would say, yeah. And, and, and what is it? Depression is cultivated in a chair that is sat. <laughs> to, like if we sit the, 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 like sitting's the new smoking, right? That have you ever heard that? Yeah. 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 And and so I think that I, I I love this conversation, but I, I think the mindset, well, you would go back to mindset of doing the hard stuff that you don't have to do creates a really good calloused mindset. Do you not? Now I, I'm with you. If you're in perpetual stress all the time and you're I, sleep, I, you're you're sleep deprived and you're jumping into water. You're, you're, you're running 10 miles every day. You're strength training. Yeah. That's called, that's a bad strategy that no one can, can keep up with that or, or a rare human can, right? David Goggins might be able to, but you know, but he's, but he's, he's conditioned it, and it's like being a fighter pilot. This is the, this is, this is why I believe that the methodology works well to be a fighter pilot. You've got to be, exhibit a very specific learning curve. You have to sure. learn at a rate of learning. As they say, anyone can be a fighter pilot. We just don't have time. Yeah. So, oh, so, yeah, yeah. So, therefore, we select. So, what happens is, and like David Goggins, is you just you become so conditioned that what seems extreme for everyone else is just normal for you. And that's 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 the bit that we miss. We we see the end product. We have the sure. the the movie life where we always see the end of the movie and the and the and the high points and the low points, but we we don't have the connective tissue of life. Right. So infinite curiosity, which again, these are just words that get thrown out and people can say, I am curious, but I'm getting nowhere. And I'll say, are you deliberately curious? Are you purposefully <laughs> right. curious? Um, and that's the magic. It's connect. You've got to connect three elements in the one, in the one mindset. What I want, what's the future look like? What's happening today? And what did I do yesterday? And mm. what am I going to do to power myself in the future? There's very few mindsets that deliberately connect the, the three states of time yeah. in one in one conversation. That's the difference. Mm. Because when you do that, remember, this is a chaos generating machine up here, right? Oh, yeah. The, the subconscious and the unconscious mind is, is the oil tanker. The mindset is the tugboat. So if, if the gotcha. mindset, of, if you don't have a mindset, the oil tanker just going to keep going the same way. Huh. If the tugboat just gradually moves you across, then but but the but the tugboat needs it needs context it needs to know i've got to go to that wharf i've got to go to that i've got to go that way so, so there's this gotcha it, you know and then we can break out the trying brain and the primal limbic and conscious mind. right but there's a lot of complexity behind this the, the one number one thing though is is it's different for everyone there are there are nine billion different habit combinations that we need to be our best selves because if mm. it wasn't if it was that easy why would we have litter on the street why do we have war why do we a hundred percent you know and, and the better context we have around things and and the, the more comfortable we are with saying mm. i don't understand the 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 more our mindset shifts into the fighter pilot mindset which is forever growth personally and community. Hmm. I love it. Have you read uh, Debrief to Win? No. Yeah, he's a fighter pilot. So I I think it, it backs it's up. It sounds like the same book. We have a book called The Debrief Imperative. It was written about 15 years ago. So it sounds yeah. like it might be a similar. But I'm hey, sure it's similar because it, it's it about like a good book. Yeah, Debrief to Win. Is, his, uh, his call sign was Cujo, right? Yeah. Well, sound, so, I mean, it's he's spot on. What, what, yes, exactly. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. There you are. It, it, yeah. It's it's exactly the fact right. there's more 
well, more than one book on it must make it something that's worth reading. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It says how, how America's top guns practice accountability leadership and how you can too. So yeah, I think when there's multiple books, it gives, it, it, it's, it's called credibility, right? I absolutely. mean, it's, yeah. it, 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 you know, that's a lot of thing with the mindset, right? People are like, well, I can't do a podcast on business because there's so many other podcasts on business. I'm like, that's why you should do a there's podcast a, on business. There's a, nuance, <laughs> there's a nuance with debriefing though. Debriefing by itself doesn't work. It's, it's, we, we call it the two whys, right? Okay. So first is Simon Sinek's why. What is the purpose of what I'm about to do? Got gotcha. you. And the second why is why am I not there yet? If you mm. debrief in the absence of clarity of purpose, it's just like any other self-reflection and, and it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, and often that's why debriefing doesn't work in organizations or at yeah. any because they haven't done the first two steps, which is plan brief, communicate it to your peer group, and then execute it together. Yeah. Then debrief it. Um, so it's a, bit like, it's a bit like learning to play tennis, but only facing a serve on match day. Uh, right. You know, we, we do that, like in what I do, we, we, we do a, 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 a version of this, right? Um, we, I'm getting ready to go tomorrow to see a team, and this is their first quarterly, the first three we sent planning, right? And then we created that plan and then they spent the last quarter executing. Yeah. And then I'll go in tomorrow and we'll debrief and say, you know, what, what, how'd you do grade your quarter? You know, was it, it's a pass fail system. It's either done or it's not done. There's no, yeah. <laughs> there's no excuses. We say the excuses are the crutches of the uncommitted. <laughs> so, and now without shame or blame, how, how did, you know, what, what did you learn? So think but, about, so yeah. that's the difference between fighter pilot thinking and, and business thinking. Business okay. thinking is quarters. So I'm at, we, we have once a quarter where we have this opportunity to reflect. Now, what if you did that three times a day? Well, yeah. And so we do, we, we do this weekly and, and w so we give them a, a strategy weekly, right? Now, what I do personally, I, I like where you're thinking because what I do personally is at the end of each day, I said, what were the three things I accomplished today? Right. And then I asked myself, you know, how did I move my, we call them rocks, but strategic priority, right? Move forward. And then, and then, you know, the, the last thing is I'm like, okay, what do I need to do tomorrow to accomplish, you know, what I should, right? Or could, not should, could. And then, you know, how will I move my rock forward tomorrow, right? And that, that I start to, and, and maybe we could add, I could add a couple of, what would you add to that? I'd make or take it, away. I'd make it super purposeful. Um, so we, we have the same three. Three is the smallest pattern the brain can recognize. So it's great. Yeah. So we say three a week, three per two weeks, three a month, three a four, three a quarter, three every six months. And those, they're just the same thing, but the size is just changes, right? I got I mean, you. you. You look at Nike. Nike's just abandoned yearly planning nike's new planning horizons three months that's it they only use a three-month strategic horizon which oh. is great that is that is that is fighter pilot thinking um how so, do they how do they set what their three months is moving toward if they don't have a greater like further out goal because the well this is this is the nuance that they know exactly where they're going which is their purpose which is they believe everyone's an athlete right so that that is their that is their purpose but there's and that what happened was they reflected on it and they said, why do we create these artificially long logistics chains? Why do we have all of this inventory? The technology huh. exists for us to accelerate our business. It's yeah. like Lego, Lego has reduced their design to production and in-store cycle to six weeks. So, so annual planning doesn't exist anymore. The, mm. the only time you might use some kind of annual or long, longer horizon planning is around capital outlay, like a building or right. Or, like mm. what, a fixed a fixed asset. Other than that, everything you, you, the world changed too quickly. It's it's so fast now. Yeah, uh, McKinsey, you know, released a report back in March, and they said uh, pre and post COVID, within two years, what took companies years to complete, I finished in a quarter, a quarter a month, a month a week, and what mm. used to take a week to do is being done in a day. We. This is where this is why we're so fatigued. This is why we're so we wake up in the morning and we're already behind. Yeah, why do pilots think second by second? I mean, we we didn't even, we haven't even unpacked the seven steps of decision making. What's actually going on up there? And and there's no reason to slow it down. 
it's designed to be fast, but we put all these artificial barriers mm. around Monday to Friday, three months in a quarter. Mm. That's a belief system. It Just really is. I agree with you. This makes sense belief. to me. You know, it's what, why do you even need dates? You know, why have dates? Just execute within a sprint. Just agree to get it done. We, we have this concept, which is the, uh, the execution rhythm. And when we work long-term with, with companies, we synchronize the entire business, 200,000 people into two weekly cycles. That's it. No one's allowed to put a project outside of a cycle. There's no, everything has to get on the, on, the, on the train that has the same stations at the same time. Do you, do you know how much potential that unlocks in an organization once you pull all this, once you get rid of all the snowflakes mm. and everyone just aligns? So you imagine, you imagine at the start of the week, strategy being pushed down into the organization, executed, and then comes back up. So by the end of the second week, all the debrief and feedback from the cold face is at the top. You, you look at the iceberg of ignorance that the, the, the top level of the organization in a traditional right. organization only knows 11% of what's going on. Agreed. So this, this is the key, right? The execution is idea to execution, reflection, adapt, re-implement. Mm. And you've got, to, you've, got to dive, you've got to constantly dive, come back out, dive, come back. And once that's, and you know, people say, oh, every two weeks, I don't get enough done. I'm like, that's 26 tangible outcomes a year. How many outcomes did you get last year? Oh, two. You know, most people don't get anything done in a week. I agree. Yeah, most people don't get anything in a week. <laughs> That's good. I love it, man. And and that is like, and you know, I, I wouldn't blow up my plan until I had another one. Would you agree with that? I have never had a plan. I've had a an I I've had a, a direction. Like I have a very clear direction. And I've had sorry, of course I have a plan, but I don't I don't have a I used to do the when I first started in business and in my accounts, I'd have these huge projections and forecasts and and I'd spend all this time. And what I realized is I started to believe that this was going to come true. Like I was like my spreadsheets were a genie in a bottle and <laughs> yeah. it, just kept, it kept not happening and it kept not happening. And then over time, I mean, I haven't really done, the only thing I use a financial model is budgeting, right? Like to mm -hmm. find a floor. Um, and, and that's really important. But you have a daily routine. No, I don't. You don't. I, I do. I mean, I have a daily routine. I have a, a daily get up at, you know, I get, I, I do what, what I do the hard stuff that I, that I feel I'm supposed to do. I eat, but, but that's, that's, that works for you, right? That's brilliant. Cause yeah. that's, well, that's your system. Like for me, I, I, for a lot of people, I would say, don't, don't be my system, which, which has no structure. Don't, don't do that. It, it works for me. I got ADHD. So it works for me. I, I have my, I work. I, work I had ADHD. <laughs> I had ADHD at one point. Like diagnosed adult, and then I no longer do. Yeah. Well, I think. So, you know me, how I did it? I just decided that I didn't have it anymore. And I, I was just focused. I, I just decided to get focused one day. And I yeah, was like, there's different, there's different it's a belief ADHD. system that I had, right? All yeah, ADHD what? is, is a belief system, is it not? Well, not yes and no. I mean, I, I only Tell found me how? Out, I only found out two years ago. Um, How'd you find out? Because my son was struggling at school, and they they asked me to go and do a to to go and do an ADHD test, and I was ninety nine point real quick. The same science that had leeches on your body, exactly right. <laughs> I just just use the same logic, um, but it's a but when when it when it comes to it's a self assessment tool, right? So for starters, I mean, don't, self, don't, I don't, self fulfilling prophecy. I don't believe in the DSV. I don't believe in any of that stuff, but. No. But let's not let's not call it ADHD. Let's call it a a habit of losing things, but being incredibly focused to achieve everything I've ever wanted to achieve in life. Whether it's the, the, my wife, whether it's my kids, whether it's the jobs yeah. I have where I live. Right. So so I would replace. There's two types of ADHD. Right. One is the distracted version, and one is the hyper focused version. So I don't, I didn't I don't have the distraction one. Me neither. Um. But it's the you know it's it's as the science behind it again, which is today's science and even, even today's science, the, the, um, the psychiatrists are saying, Hey, this is our best guess at the moment. But what it, what science is, is a story, right? And it's the same as if the story fulfills your belief system. So if I'm, 
believe that I lose my wallet, I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave my passport in the back of an airplane. And then I read a book and it says all of these things and it says it's ADHD. For me, that's a convenient right. label. It's a bunch of stories. So you're a pilot though, right? So, well, that's, that's the beauty a, of it. But, I know, but checklists are the, from what I understand, I'm no pilot, but checklists are like the pilot's main standard. Yes. Which is the perfect, the, the perfect solution for someone with ADHD. Yes, a, that's what that, 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 that's what I'm saying. It, you you decide not to do it. You just have a tool. You're good. Yeah, and that's 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 again why I love the structure of being a fighter pilot because yeah. people who are I don't know what would have happened if I didn't have that. Like I, you, you the the point is, you had to make a decision to not be something you thought you were. You still had absolutely. to absolutely, okay. absolutely. So without the labels, without without the concept, you were weren't able to make the decision. Now. Often people say, I've ADHD, I'm on Adderall the rest of my life, and that's all I'm going to do. That's not growth mindset, right? That, that's, that's, I have ADHD, but I'm, I'm not here saying, hey, I've got ADHD. It's an excuse. It's like, yeah, hey, let I me have... succumb to it. Correct. I just I think it's, I, I, I think it's I not, a, I think, I think the only thing that's wrong with it, if they called it attention deficit, I'd be like, all right. Like, but when they, when they put the disorder on it, I'm like, why are you putting a disorder on it? It's called the human condition. Yes. Yeah, it's not a disorder. It's a, I think it's a, it's a superpower. Super. Yes. And that's a good one to end on right there. That's mindset in its, in its shell. This is, look, I, I'll be honest. Like, th Boo, this has been a great interview because it's been more like ideas and, and, and uh, you know, being the devil's advocate. And, and to me, that's the most fun because I think people learn from that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what debriefing is. It's challenging all the time. It's I love it's it. challenging not to be right. It, you, yeah. The challenge the the challenge could be to to prove up a theory that you disagreed with and now all of a sudden that and that's the you know, you need to have the elasticity to to be able to do that. But at the same time, you know, I have a saying it's which is, you know, don't don't tell me your opinion, but I'd love to hear your informed opinion. Yeah, um, yeah. And, the, and the, just that the, <laughs> there's a paraphrase that goes with that. It's my favorite. It's like when there's data available, let's go with the data. But when there's an opinion, let's just go with mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like my favorite one. True. I love it. Uh, you know, you've changed my mind on this one. I'll just tell you one thing that I really uh, took away from this that that I, I didn't strongly consider until this conversation. And that is the idea of having, you know, and, and maybe it's sacrilege in some, but, but I'm going to flesh it out as we go through this. But having no one-year plan, but having the alignment of the organization, maybe it's two months out, but making sure everybody's aligned on that on that strategic initiative, whatever you want to call it, rowing in the same page and, and going down into it, back up and but debriefing you, as we move forward. But like this, if you can, if you can debrief and you can improve, you can do three hundred percent more with your time. What you're really saying is we're we're going to get nine months worth done in three months. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That, that, that's the key, right? And and the problem with a one year plan is that we've got one year to do it. Three yeah, months. we've only it's, got three months. You know what Parkinson's law is, I assume, or no? Uh, that's that's around time, right? That's the that's the is that the twenty yeah, thirty fifty? You didn't you didn't love the book Atomic Habits, but that's the first place that I, I read it in is is um, that you're given the you use the amount of resources you have available, and what you just said, if you have a year available, you're just going to take the whole year. And if you if you said, hey, I'm going to do the same job in six months, you could most likely get it done or at least get really close to it in, in six months instead of taking it a year. People say people say it takes you know, a good two years to write a book, right? Um, but what I've learned is actually you can write half a book in a day if you are just absolutely focused. You've done all your research. Like you, you sure you you're, you're, you can't write a book on day on nuclear engineering if you're not a nuclear engineer that's not one of them right mean. right but if you you already the, the the thing about being writing a book right is is taking a lot of, an enormous amount of conceptual detail and getting it to a point where it's not too high not too low just right and the and that that this is also the challenge of leadership right which is to how do i find the perfect balance between what i need to go up and what i need to do down mm. and, and and the reason we never get there is we don't create that 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 focus area so and then then you get into the 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 me we us philosophy where if 
in the morning, it's all about me. In the middle of the day, yeah. it's we. And in the afternoon, it's us. Um, yeah. But yeah. That's anyway. Good. So lot- your, your basic philosophy of life is this, um, is, is, what would you call it? Um, oh, man, I just had it. Um, equilibrium. Yeah, and it's not really. A, it's equilibrium, but at the same time, absolute purpose-fueled focus. And I, I was gifted with that, right? I didn't learn. I was, Good. I was just lucky when I was five. I just huh. wanted, wanted to be a fighter pilot. And here I am at 49, still doing fighter pilot stuff, right? Yeah. So so for me, like, don't, 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 I take, I can take that for granted. A lot of people never have purpose connect with them and and my philosophies on life aren't really philosophies it's just my life and i'm trying to prove up i'm now Mm. trying to find the data and the science Mm. to tell my story which isn't hey i i do this and i do that so you should do it right Um, so so the challenge is is yeah we know that the way fighter pilots think and do things is the right way because thousands of fighter pilots died trying to figure it out but there's there's science behind it. There's, there's philosophy behind it. And what is it? And the more I dig down into it, I can see how this fighter pilot mindset and methodology was actually engineered to create growth in the absence of growth, but also to mitigate our humanness because it's the humanness that comes out mm-hmm. and, our, and our limitations that you, you, you cannot be in, in a, in a, as a fighter pilot. But equally, yin and yang, you can't be inhuman. So we, we say we're human and the same as everyone else, except when we're on a mission and yeah. then we go back. But w- whereas in life, a lot of people are just mission focused and not very human right? or people are too touchy feely. And, and we're starting to see the world split mm. on those two themes. Some are very, it's all about you and, 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 and you wear red and it's all about everyone and you wear blue and, mm. and the, like everything in life right sits in the middle yeah i like it you know we opened up you opened up with your conversation with the with the the former marine and the 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 conflict that's going on and you know i, I think about the you know non-human and then you know touchy-feely and then well i think about in 90 let's call it 80 percent of the rooms had you mentioned that it would it would digress into something that it doesn't need to digress into because people are either you know not being human or they're not, or they're being yeah. too touchy feely. And there's this, there's a, I like the word equilibrium because it, it just, I think it does. It, 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 it mel- you're not a robot. You know, I was in the Marines and people would be like, well, they brainwashed you or you just do what you're told. I'm like, that's just not true. Like yeah, there's lawful, there's yeah. lawful orders. There's, you know, it, it, no one's going to give a command to shoot into a, you're not Manchurian candidates here. Okay. We're just, human that that were decision making and and i would say the marines are are some of the most is the is one of the in the marines it was the most i could be myself and push back on bad ideas without repercussion or or any kind of blame or shame or guilt or being shut down but you had the you had the biggest accelerator of time in the marines and that's trust ah man that, that is good that that is the there's two time machines that you can jump into in life. One is go to bed, wake up the next day better, and two is build mm. trust. I um, want you listen. Everybody's listening right now. I want you to listen to what Boo just said. The greatest accelerator of time is trust, and that right there is a mic drop moment, man. It was worth the whole conversation for me to get that. So thank you so much. I I need to have you on again because I think that you you said there were seven there were seven steps that we didn't cover the, the seven the, se- the the seven program steps of decision making and the eight steps to change. So there's there's two things I'd like to have you on, and it might be two episodes after hearing that. So I'd like to get really focused on the seven steps, and then maybe do another one on on, on the eight. What'd you call it? They live together. So they live together. That, so yeah, maybe just one. And that's the, you know, that's, that's when we start, when we stop thinking in lines and start thinking in circles, that's the, that's, that's so the, good. That's so Boo, best. tell everybody how to find you. I live in a, in a world called callmeboo.com. Uh, I'm surprised that that URL was available. And, <laughs> and afterburner.com is our incredibly, you know, high impact, powerful 
fighter pilot mindset and methodology program. So afterbender.com, call me boo.com. Oh, I love that so much. Hey, have a great day. It was an absolute pleasure getting to know you and, and talking to you. Thanks for having me, Barry. 